Also guys, in this video, I wanna give you an example of factoring a quadratic trinomial as a easy example, a medium example, as well as a hard example. Okay, now I know the term easy, medium, hard is all relative. If you're just learning factoring, these could all be hard. If you are in calculus, these could all be easy. But guess what? Students make mistakes on these types of problems all the time. So I think it's really important to share with you how I want to approach these as well as give you guys some tips and insights. So therefore, no matter what type of problem that you are factoring on your own, you can utilize this video to refer back to and understand how to factor more efficiently. So let's go and take a look at this first example, x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now the reason why this is a easy example is because this last term, it's 1. Now the important thing we need to understand when we're factoring for any quadratic trinomial is that a quadratic trinomial can always be factored into a product of two binomials. To go from this product two binomials back to this quadratic, if we were to multiply this out, we know the first two terms of my binomial is always gonna multiply to give you the first term of your quadratic trinomial, which in this case is x squared. Actually, for all of these is x squared. So we know these first two terms is always going to be x. Now, for the last two terms of these binomials, they're gonna multiply to give us our last term. And that's why this is so easy, because what we need to think about are, well, what are our options for multiplying to give us a one, it's one and one, and also a negative one and a negative one. So we really have two options, right? Even if this was like a coin flip, you could just maybe even take a guess, but we're smarter than that. Because when we want to be able to identify the factoring, we're not just looking for what two numbers multiply to give us our last term, but we're looking for which two numbers are going to add to give us this middle term, which in this case is going to be a positive two. So the important thing is, if I know my last term is positive, right? I know my last two factors either have to be both positive or both negative, but then we look at our middle term. It makes no sense for my two factors to be negative one and negative one because I know they're not gonna add to give me a positive two, right? The only option I have in this example is a positive one and a positive one because again, one times one gives me one and when we multiply the inner and the outer, those are gonna combine to give us a two X. Now we can simplify this a little bit further and write it as a binomial squared as x plus one quantity squared. Now let's go and take a look at our middle one. Now, the reason why this is kind of a medium example, students get this problem wrong all the time. I have got this problem all the time. So you just have to be careful. And the reason why a couple things we need to be careful about is one, when we look at our last term six, it has more than just one and one, right? Or negative one and negative one. Yes, we have negative, we have six and one, and we have three and two. So we have a couple options of factors. The other important thing we need to look at is our last term is going to be negative. So when we're thinking about when it's positive, we know the factors are gonna have the same side. Either they're both positive or they're both going to be negative. When we have a last term is negative, one of our factors will be positive and one of our factors is going to be negative. So now we just opened up a box to a whole different subset, right? We could have negative six and one, we could have positive six and negative one, three and negative two, negative three and positive two. There's a lot of options. But the one thing we do know is we can break it up into a product of two binomials and we know these first two terms are going to be x and x. So now what we need to consider ourselves is look at this middle term again. Now notice the middle term is going to be negative. What I usually tell my students is, when our last term is negative, think about this term as like the difference, right? So what two factors have a difference of negative five? Again, forget about the positive and negatives for a second. We have six and one, and we have three and two. Which of these two factors have a difference of five? Well, obviously you can see that's six and one. Now again, we need to get a difference of negative five. So what we need to do then is make sure that's going to be a negative six, and that's gonna be a positive one. And ladies and gentlemen, those are going to be your two factors. However, what's the thing that most students do all the time? They remember this product and sum, like one and one, they add to give you two X. Students all the time will think that it's a X minus a three times an X minus two. I've done it myself. But again, here's the kicker, ladies and gentlemen, negative three times negative two is a positive six, right? So you gotta think when your last number is negative, think difference of the factors. When your last number is positive, think sum of your factors. All right, now let's get to the last example. And this one's really not hard with factoring. The reason why it's hard is because 154. Like who the heck wants to go ahead and factor something this large? And in reality, to be honest with you, I don't really care if you can factor this very, very efficiently or very quickly in your head. Ladies and gentlemen, we have technology. And I was always a big component of students understanding how to factor with smaller numbers efficiently than always trying to trick them with some larger numbers. 
However, one of the biggest things that plague, I think our education system, is students having a poor value of number sets. So I think it's really important to at least understand how to approach this. We're not gonna do any crazy trick, something that you're going to forget the next day. I just wanna show you what we can do here to write down the factors. Now, I don't know all the numbers that multiply to give me 154, but there is something that I learned a couple years ago in grade school, or you probably learned a couple years in grade school, that can benefit you for this. So. A couple things, when you recognize that your last number is going to be even, you know your number is going to be divisible by two. Now again, we're looking for what two numbers, since my last number is positive, are going to multiply to give me 154 and add to give me a 25. So what I want you to do is create a factor tree. I know 154 can be broken down, I can divide it by two, right? So I know my one, two factors are going to be 154 and times one, but if I divide this by two, two goes into 154, let's see, that's going to be a 77 times. Now I can factor that down again, and I can say seven times 11. The reason why this is important is because again, I'm trying to identify what are all the numbers that evenly divide into 154. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I can go ahead and create possible factors. So for 154, I have 154 times one, and again, I'm looking for, does that add to 25? No. I could do two times 11, which is going to be a 22 times seven. Does that give me a 25? No, that gives me a 29. But then I could do a two times seven, so that'd be a 14 times 11. And again, all these numbers, ladies and gentlemen, multiply to give me 154. However, take a look at this. Does 14 times 11 give me a 25? Ah, yes it does, right? So just having a basic understanding of how to break down a number, we can easily create our possible factors by creating that factor tree. That's why going back to some of those basics is so helpful, even for a problem that might look daunting, right? And if you have a calculator, obviously you could do guess and check and play around, but that can take some time. If you know how to approach a problem like this with larger numbers, it didn't take me that long. Obviously I had to explain my way through it, but now we know 14 times 11 is 154. You can always check your work or check me if you want to. And 14 plus 11 is 25. So now I can write this in factored form of x plus a 14 times a x plus 11.